Now, from SRV Studios, Mr. Craig Patrick.
All right, let's try this again. There we go. It helps if you turn the mic on. Yeah, I know, Steve. <laughs> I got it. Uh, you should have uh, you should have audio now. Sorry about that, folks. You do have to uh, do have to turn these things on for them to work. All right. So, uh, welcome to the Schuylkill River Valley for Sidetrack Sunday number one for October 2022. It's great to see everybody here. I appreciate uh, appreciate y'all stopping in. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. You gotta understand, this is uh, this is my first day. <laughs> of course, it was your fault, Heath. We all knew that. All right, let's see who's here. Got a bunch of people here. Artie was in. He was first, and he was looking for a cookie. Uh, I think he's got me mistaken for uh, for Jim Tedesco. He's the guy that hands out cookies. <clears throat> I did have some baking already, but I think I burned them. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Stephen from Wigwag Workshop. Good to see you. Lynn McCurdy. Always good to see you, sir. Uh, let's see. Who else is here? Uh, Dwight Curley's here. Good to see you, Dwight. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Knopfel was in. He said he might miss the show. Uh, appreciate you stopping in, John. Hopefully you, uh, Hopefully you can make it. Uh, and trackside Mike's here. Good to see you, Mike. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Oh, uh, Ron Moan's here. Always good to see you, Ron. Appreciate you being here. And Pirates from of the Model Trains, Mickey Collins. Good to see you, Mickey. Uh, Mickey's actually one of my uh, many nicknames from when I was uh, much younger. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? My last name being McKernan, so Mick was kind of a kind of a given. I say, oh, Fultz Bailey Model Railroad, Rick. Here, Rick, for you, man. A uh, 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 Fultz Bailey Model Railroad mug. Appreciate it, Rick. Let's see. Kyle Stevens is here. Uh, let's see who else. Steve, eighty seventh Peace Ave. Good to see you, Steve. Randall Ellison's here. Good to see you, Randall. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, I have gotten everybody. Kyle Stevens is here. Good to see you, Kyle. There's Ian from the Lehigh River Subdivision. Appreciate you being here, Ian. And there's Joe Rader from the Black Rock Central. Good to see you, Joe. Let's see here who else do we have and jason the train freaks here another uh sidetrack sunday member good to see you jason uh jason's gluing ties on his first hand built turnout uh i'm really looking forward to seeing that oh uh, there's anthony dodge good to see you, anthony uh, let's see, i said hello to joe and alan from mason dixon railroad good to see you alan and Caboose 121 is here. Good to see you, Cameron. And there's Heath, another sidetrack Sunday inmate. Good to see you, Heath. Let's see. Ah, um, oh, there's John Manicki. Good to see you, John. And Rusty from Possum, Possum Bio. Good to see you, Rusty. And Chris from Go Be or Go Home. Good to see you, Chris. Let's see what else. Who else do we have here? Um, I think, oh, Ken Amos. Good to see you, Ken. Let's see. Uh, and Lynn McCarty is a Micmac, Mother Irish, and Papa Scottish. Well, Lynn, uh, both my parents are, are Irish, so I'm a Mick. Let's see, somebody said hi to Corey. 
I didn't see Corey, but hey, good to see you. And there's John from Mystic Southern or Mystic Railroad. Good to see you, John. Oh, there's Corey. Good to see you, Corey. And Tim from CP368 Productions. Good to see you, Tim. <coughs> Norman Rowe. Good to see you, Norman. And uh, I think I I think I got everybody. So I appreciate everybody being here tonight. How many do we have? Let's see, 35 watching. Not bad. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Rusty is a Heinz 57 himself. Well, actually, I have a little bit more than just Irish in me. My uh, father's mother was Slovak, and my mother's mother was Pennsylvania Dutch. But uh, if you ask my father, I was all Irish. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh Okay, I think I think I caught everybody. All right, so uh, tonight I'm going to get back on the uh, drawbridge diorama. Uh, oh, there's Scott from Waycross Trains and the surrounding area trains. Uh, let's see, he's going to launch his new YouTube channel from the train club and building his HO scale layout. Very cool, Scott. Looking forward to it. And Mike, the rail artist, is here. Good to see you, Mike. Appreciate you stopping in. Norman Rowe was born in Belfast. Wow, that's cool. I was born right here in Pennsylvania. Corey, Slovak, hell yeah. Well, yeah, Slovak, uh, Corey, there's not an awful lot of Slovak that, uh, that I know. Uh, I went to uh, a Catholic grade school, and it was a, a Slovak school. And the nuns did try to teach a Slovak, but they had no clue how to teach a language. And uh, about all I remember is the words for brother and sister. Uh, what is it? Brat and sestra. And, and mother, matka. But that's about all I remember. Uh, my, uh, my father's aunt, uh, she was a career army nurse, and she was, she was the coolest lady that I ever met, and she always said Svata Maria, which I believe means Saint Mary. Uh, it was probably about the closest she could get to uh, to cursing. Uh, <laughs> Rick's Italian wife tries to tell his Irish kids that they're Italian. <laughs> well, actually, uh, getting back to Norman there, uh, uh, my father wouldn't consider you Irish, Norman. Sorry, you were born in Belfast, and that's the uh, the, the wrong side of the border. Uh, wow, you are, you are way ahead of me there, Corey. I I couldn't even come come close to that one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Rail artists went to Catholic grade school as well, first through eighth grade. So did I, Mike. A very very small Catholic school. There's the CB Railroad and HO scale. Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> and Chris. <laughs> I like that. I learned to ask if I could use the bathroom and that come back. <laughs> they were really good at that, Corey. <laughs> and Heath, we all figured that, believe me. My uh, my father's mother used to say a few things in uh, in Slovak as well, but I don't remember any of them. And uh, knowing her, they probably weren't very complimentary. So, <laughs> CV Railroad in HO scan scale was sprayed out of an aerosol can. Uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, if we hadn't immigrated, I might not have made it. Yes, you might not have. And yardstick discipline, yes. The uh, my knuckles saw the uh, the back of a yardstick on more than one occasion. Well, well, I mean, you're from from Arkansas, Jason. We wouldn't expect you to know what school is. <laughs> All right, so I am going to get back onto the uh, 
the drawbridge diorama. I've got some uh, some details for the bridge. Let's see. What's this? Let me see what this is. Uh, Belfast in 1699 and County Mayo in 1840 is where and when my Irish ancestors came from. Oh, cool, Tim. Um, hey, Mr. Jimbo Strange. Good to see you, man. Uh, <laughs> he has his master's degree in sarcasmology. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, uh, I believe uh, my ancestors were from the county Kern, but I did get that from my Slovak grandmother, so I'm not really sure how accurate that was. <laughs> and Rusty went to school in Mississippi. Well, never mind. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Hey, there's Mark. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you being here. Uh, <laughs> do the windows open? We'll get to the windows, Heath. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> no, these don't, but, uh, probably the next ones will. Uh, some of my relatives were horse thieves. Well, my, uh, my Slovak grandmother's, uh, family was, uh, actually run out of uh, Czechoslovakia at the time. Uh, from what I understand, the, the villagers chased them out with uh, torches and pitchforks. Um, not really sure what my grandfather did or my great-grandfather did, but uh, <clears throat> apparently they weren't welcome back. And if you knew my grandmother, you wouldn't be the least bit surprised. <clears throat> Ah, Rusty had a high school class reunion this weekend. Cool. I've never been to one of them. Oh, yes, I have, it's been, but it's been quite a while. Ah, and Joe Rader had relatives on both sides in World War I. That's cool. All right, so uh, let me put you folks on, uh, on hold here for a second while I... Uh, <laughs> I don't think very many people are surprised at that one either, Heath. Uh, okay, let me uh, let me put you folks on hold for a second while I uh, rearrange the camera and get the diorama up here, and then I'll get back to work. So hang on, folks. I'll be right with you. Okay, I'm back. I see uh, Edward from Happy Valley Hobby stopped in, uh, and somebody else I noticed. Oh, uh, uh, Scott from Hillbilly Railroad. Good to see you guys. Uh, your 40th high school reunion was this year. My 40th? <laughs> that was a couple years ago. Uh, I'm not really going to admit to how many of them. But I didn't make it to mine either. Uh, uh, what did what did Groucho Mark say? I wouldn't want to join a club that would have me. Yep, I've always kind of agreed with that one, Lynn. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, somebody said hi to Robert Darby. Good to see you, Robert. I didn't see you come in. 
I think we probably have everybody. If I missed anybody, I do apologize. I do apologize. Okay, so this is pretty much where we left off uh, last month. I've done a little bit of prep work. Uh, and Tim's mom's 50th high school reunion is next year. While well, mine's getting close. <laughs> oh, am I backwards, Norman? Sorry, man. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so I did a little bit of prep work uh, for ten, in order for to uh, get ready for tonight. When I installed the bridge track last week, I neglected to glue down the ends of the guardrail. So I did take care of that. And uh, I was originally going to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the problem is, Heath, these are pretty expensive bridges to repaint, man. I read somewhere that it would take... Could for for a truss bridge anyhow, it could take at least a million dollars to repaint it. Uh, so I don't know how quickly this one's going to get repainted. Um, so I did uh, I did glue them down so they weren't just uh, kind of flapping there. Thank you, Corey. I appreciate that, man. Uh, uh, Jason, I'll probably just use this for. Uh, uh, for photographs, so uh, probably any and all locomotives, anything new that I get will probably uh, end up being photographed on here, unless uh, one of my grandsons decides he likes it too much and takes it from me. <clears throat> uh, hey, Robert, appreciate you being here, and thank you, man. It's coming along, still has a, still has a way to go. Sold, Lynn. That's a that's a bargain, man. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I thought so too. Um, so anyhow, uh, the bridge came with um, wooden walkways for alongside the bridge. They were very poor. They were just molded plastic, and they weren't terribly convincing. They were ridiculously thick. They had probably been about uh, eight by eights laid on side. So, um, so I decided I wasn't going to use them. And my original thought was to uh, just get some, uh, probably some uh, 16th inch bass wood and cut them down to scale size and uh, sc uh, uh, scribe in the, uh, the, the boards. But then I, I decided on trying an experiment. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I'm planning on uh, a bikini-clad girl in the boat. Uh, but yeah, that that will that and the the fisherman on the side here will probably be the last uh, last pieces to uh, to go on. And I believe that, Corey. Building the bridge would certainly be more expensive than painting it. Uh, let's see. So anyhow, I, I tried an experiment. Um, I think I like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Vinny, good to see you, man. Appreciate you being here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris wants to know what color is that bridge? It is, um, uh, 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 who is it? Um, cry, it's a, it's a Rust-Oleum. It's not Cryolan, it's rust -Oleum, and it's called Ocean Breeze, uh, or Ocean Mist, I'm sorry. Ocean Mist, it's, uh, it's kind of a, as you can see, kind of a light green. Uh, I, I found uh, a YouTube channel and I and I haven't been able to find it again, so I don't know whether he he took it down or whatever. But he, uh, the guy, did a, a video, and in the video he showed a bridge very very similar to this, which is what I based my uh, my control booth on, and and a lot of the scene actually. Hey Chuck from Chasco, good to see you, man. 
Um, and that, this is the the closest I could come to the, the color of that bridge. Uh, so thanks, Chris. Uh, I, I really like the color, actually. So uh, this is the experiment that I tried. Um, uh, oh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, it, it is uh, kind of tough to tell on, on screen. Uh, my, my lighting is good enough to show what I'm doing, but it's really not the best for, uh, for something like this. I do need to work on that. But this is, this is what I think I like it. I haven't completely convinced myself yet. Uh, what it is is it's just a piece of thin cardstock, and I glued onto it that um, rubberized mesh that you put in the bottom of, like, kitchen drawers to keep things from, uh, from rolling around, which sometimes work and sometimes don't. Uh, anyhow, I, I glued that down and then uh, spray painted it the same color as as the bridge and cut it down into scale pieces. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, Heath. That's one of the nicest things you've ever said to me. I appreciate it. Uh, so I cut it down into in the scale uh, six foot lengths, I figured that would be uh, a reasonable length for uh, for this metal grating. That's going to be the door. Um, I did not spray spray paint this indoors. Uh, this was a rattle can, and I always do that outside. Uh, but if I'm spraying uh, with my airbrush and acrylics, then yes, I would paint inside. But I go outside and I spray paint it and I bring it inside and then the smell goes all through the house anyhow. So I may as well just have spray painted it outside. But anyhow, I thought, uh, thank you, thank you, cuz. I appreciate it, man. So I, I kind of thought the, the six foot lengths for these pound, uh, metal grates would be appropriate. I don't know, but it seemed to work for me. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to tack them into place. Uh, like I said, I think I like this. I'm not entirely sure. I'm probably going to have to uh, live with it a little while to make sure I, I actually do like it. If not, I have, uh, I have another, uh, another idea in mind. Uh, but let's see. So I figured... Uh, by putting it in context with the bridge and in the, the proper size, I'd get a much better view of, much better idea whether I actually do like it or not. So what I'm going to do tonight is, if the glue will come out of the container, is I'm going to just tack them in place so that in case I decide, uh, I don't like it. It'll come up easily enough. And yes, Heath, I am tacking it in place with Aline's tacky glue. So what I did was, uh, hey, Roy Eltham, good to see you, man. <clears throat> uh, Chris, here, let's see. Um, actually, no, it doesn't. The uh, the original, it's a Polar model, and it did have a big. Uh, hand crank that uh, that you could raise and lower the bridge. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> but uh, excuse me, one second, folks. Ah, went down the wrong pipe. Uh, so the bridge at one time did go up and down. But whoever built it originally, when they glued it together, they must have used um, Plastruct or maybe just MEK and kind of melted all the gears. So I decided to just uh, model it static down in place. 
Uh, so instead of happy little accidents, it'll be happy little derailments. There you go, Edward. Pretty cool. So I uh, I glued down some. <coughs> I glued down some uh, some plastic. Uh, like 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 tea brackets, they're not uh, they're not evergreen. I don't think they're plastic either. I've had these for a very long time, and I'm not even sure where I got them now. Uh, but they're 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 T shaped, and they came up to <clears throat> about the right height to get the uh, to get these panels up over the. Um, the the ties. So now we'll uh, oh Mike Rellers, that's cool. Mike's uh, planning on moving to the cabin on the river, but he also has a twenty eight by eight foot trailer that the trains are going into. So that's uh. That's pretty cool. Well, from 27 by 31 to 28 by 8, yeah, I guess that's going to be a little bit of a change. But at least you're still going to have trains, Mike. Uh, honestly, Heath, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it was sold under. It was the, I never bought the bridge. It was given to me. Uh, Craig, who, uh, who plays our opening act here? <clears throat> I believe it was his father-in-law who uh, who had it, who built it, and um, it was back from probably the fifties or sixties. So I really don't know. Let's see. Anyone else having trouble getting foam? <clears throat> uh, uh, not me. Uh, Jimbo, I haven't uh, haven't tried to get any for a while. Uh, let's see. Oh, turn around the right way, dummy. Uh all right, Mark from My Life Tries. Good to see you, man. Uh, he says he believes AHM made that bridge in the 70s. That really could be. <clears throat> I thought it was older than that, uh, but I don't. I could be, I could definitely be wrong. Like I said, I didn't buy it. And Rusty says you could buy it Pola or Model Power back in the caveman days. I mm, guess I am from back in the caveman days. <clears throat> Oh, Thomas Grossi. Uh, <coughs> good to see you, Tom. Uh, when I'm done with the bridge, you're going to blow it up like the bridge over the River Kwai. Uh, probably not. But you know what? That is a thought. I guess that depends on how well it comes out. So, let's see. So if I end up not liking these panels, once I get them on here and <coughs> and uh, weathered, uh, yeah, Mark, that's all right. Better late than never, man. Uh, if I don't like it, once I uh, once I get them in and weathered up, I do have an idea for a replacement, but kind of wanted to try this. So I was, uh, if you guys can, uh, when, when I get it further along, I'll give you a better shot. And uh, kind of like to see what you folks think of it. Like I said, it was an experiment. And uh, not all experiments work out. These guys. Yep, that's the one. Uh, I 
Oh, Vinny. Okay. Vinny missed what I am doing. I am... Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit better. Maybe give you folks a better view here. Uh, where am I? I'm working on Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm adding the... This is, like I was saying, this is an experiment. Uh, simulating a metal grate. I'm adding as a walkway alongside the bridge. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the original came with uh, really horrible uh, wooden or molded plastic, supposed to look like wooden walkways. And I really didn't like them, and I was originally going to replace them you know, with wood. But then I had this idea. So I want to say, uh, oh, there's Kevin S.F. Raton, uh, New Zealand. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you being here. Uh, well, he that was kind of the idea. It's not, uh, it's not exactly diamond plate, but my idea is that if it looks close enough to diamond plate when I get it weathered, uh, then, uh, then I'll keep it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Even I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been accused of that before. And probably rightfully so. This uh, this plating that I made here, this uh, simulated diamond plate, was really easy to make. Um, like I said, it was just uh, just a piece of thin cardstock, and uh, and that that uh, rubberized mesh material. I cut a section out of my, uh, uh, Mr. Jimbo, this is, uh, I made this out of, uh, just a piece of thin cardstock, and, um, uh, I glued to it some, uh, some of that, um, that rubberized mesh, the kitchen drawer liner. Thank you, Norman. I was having trouble coming up with that. The stuff that's uh, supposed to keep all your spoons and stuff from sliding all over the place, which doesn't really uh, work for me all that often, no, all that well. So I decided I would cut a strip of it off and use that. That was one of the reasons I decided not to use super glue, because I knew I'd be getting my fingers stuck in it. And there's already enough DNA on this model. Uh, Steven, yeah, I don't think there's any difference between the pink and blue. It's probably the manufacturer. Uh, what I can get here at Lowe's is usually the, uh, the blue stuff. But at Home Depot down the street, it's usually the pink stuff. So... Uh, Mike, only because uh, this is what I had on hand. And 
<laughs> yes, you're right. Every model I've ever built has a little DNA on it. Uh, this is what I had on hand, and one of the ideas behind this diorama was to build it with all existing materials. The model itself was given to me, and I wanted to try and build it. All right, uh, cuz, appreciate you stopping in, man. Enjoy dinner, and we'll see you later. Uh, I wanted to try and build it with buying as little as I could. Do it all with uh, whatever scrap materials I had around. And so far I've done pretty good. The only things that I bought, I bought the paint. I bought uh, a little tube of putty to fix the, uh, the top of the bridge. Yeah, that, 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 like I said, that was the idea, Mike. Uh, I've a little bit of putty for fixing the counterweight on the bridge. And I have about 95% of that tube left, so I didn't use very much of it. And I don't think I bought anything else. I think everything else was either something I already had on hand or was able to uh, make out of scrap materials. Uh, I did think of the uh, the not on screen though, but like I said, I didn't have any, and that would. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see, Heath. I've already taken off my uh, my laundry room door for the the end scale layout, and I cut a strip of this uh, drawer liner out of my kitchen drawers for this. So, uh, yeah, I guess I could have. Uh, well, that's what uh, super glue was originally made for. Uh, Mike Rail Otters can attest to that. I believe it was uh, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam War, and it was used to uh, stitch together wounds and I've actually used it for that purpose many times myself let me see who's trying to get in touch with me here uh, okay only Jason nothing important uh, John, 2618. Hey, good to see you, man. Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you uh, survived the hurricane. Well, obviously, you survived the hurricane. You wouldn't be here. I hope, uh, hope you didn't suffer too much damage. Right, yeah, that's uh, that's what I was trying to get at, Mike. I that's uh, I did understand that, and I and I figure I, I was pretty sure it was developed during uh, during the Vietnam War. Uh, oh, okay, Jason, cool. I will uh, I will check that out when I'm done here. How'd it come out, Jason? CV Robert says he thought it was for gluing helmets, helmets to cinder box. <laughs> uh, Roy Eltham, I think I said hello to you, but just in case, good to see you. Once I get these in place, I'm going to uh, install the control booth. And that's what Heath was asking about earlier, were, my, uh, were the windows for it. 
Oh, cool, Jason. <clears throat> All right, Roy, cool. I didn't, didn't want to miss you, man. Uh, Jeff, the railroad enthusiast, paint paint what white after I finish installing them? The, these panels? John K., better get something done or the layout will never get done. Yeah, that's... Uh, for some reason, they don't seem to want to finish themselves. Jeff, if you're talking about these... Uh, okay, Jeff's talking about these panels. No, I'm probably not going to paint them. I'm going to leave them... I painted them the, the color of the bridge. I... Uh, I tend to model in the 60s when I was a kid and uh, wasn't a whole lot of concern about, uh, you know, safety. Safety then, things weren't painted white and yellow. Uh, for the most part, people were responsible for their own safety. Uh well, they are definitely going to get uh, get weathered, Norman. I wanted to get them in place first to keep the uh, the weathering fairly consistent. And yes, you're right, Jason. And layout is never finished. In fact, I would never want my layout to be finished because once the layout's finished, all that's left to do is either run trains or. Uh, Tear it down and build another one. I, I do enjoy running the trains, of course, but I enjoy building the layout. And if I didn't have something to build, I think I would, uh, I think I'd get bored of it pretty quickly. Hmm. Hmm. This bridge was not meant for Big fingers. There we go. <laughs> okay, not if you're Jack Burgess. Okay. All right, Kevin. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you stopping in. Get some more glue here. Yeah, so uh, getting back to you, Jeff, actually none of my layouts are going to have any any safety uh, striping or you won't see guys running around in little yellow vests or anything like that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh, that doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. This one goes here. So, so we're obviously not going to get to uh, to the rusting or weathering tonight. Um, but I did experiment with. Uh, with weathering these just a little bit just to see if I was how it was gonna work. Here was uh, where are you? This was wow. Okay, this was one that I weathered with uh, India ink and I really didn't care for the way that came out. This is uh, one wow it's not showing up on camera well at all. All right. I'll have to get you folks uh, a better picture at some point. But I did try it with uh, some pan pastels and that came out a whole lot better. And since this is something that's not gonna be handled, <laughs> Norman says that'll be in part 49. <laughs> eh, could be Norman, we're on part 13 now. Yeah, Corey, unfortunately, those days are gone, man. 
it was a much better world then. Get in there. Yeah, that's never going to stay. Yeah, maybe it will. Oh. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, Jason Burnt Umber does work really well. Um, the problem that I really wasn't happy with uh, with this is the that uh, rubberized mesh on top. It, uh, it was just absorbing anything that I uh, that I put on there. So that's why I went with the uh, the pan pastels. And uh, that worked out pretty good. Much better in person than under this lighting. There. All right, you come over here and more glue. I actually, for uh, for rusting, I like to use uh, burnt umber oil paint, and I like putting the uh, dabbing it on, getting it where I want the rust to be, and then by using some paint thinner, uh, you can uh, you can have it have it, the uh, the paint run down, uh, yeah, to in, in the cracks and, and crevices, and it, and it looks pretty good. Uh, yes, Roy, Roy Eltham here. I could paint the rubber, coat the rubber mesh with some PVA glue. Uh, yeah, yes, Norman, I can zoom out a bit. Oh, actually, I didn't realize I was out of the camera. There we go. Sorry about that, Norman. <coughs> um, where was I? Oh yes, so I did. I did consider that. Uh, what what seemed to work really well, painting it didn't help. It stayed every bit as sticky as uh, as it was unpainted. But when I hit it with a coat of dull coat, that took away a lot of the stickiness. Now. The PVA glue may have worked better as far as um, sealing it, but like I said, this was an experiment, and sometimes the, uh, the first try isn't the best. Uh, you're quite welcome, Norman. Thank you for... Uh, for pointing that out. I got working and talking and not paying attention to the camera. Oh, there's definitely going to be trees on here, Jason. In fact, I have uh, holes drilled for most of them. <clears throat> and the trees are made, but wanted to wait until towards the end because uh, I'm just reaching in here too much to be trying to reach around trees without destroying them. <laughs> I guess not, Edward. <laughs> I'm 
So I have mostly, uh, all right, Randall, welcome back, man. So I have mostly uh, pines and evergreens here, but I do have a, a couple deciduous trees ready to go in. In fact, one large deciduous tree, which will have, which will sit uh, off camera and have a, uh, a tire swing attached to it. <clears throat> and I do have a couple dead trees that are going to go in there. Uh, oh, welcome back, Mike. Always got to take care of the wife. She certainly comes before I do. All right, so. <clears throat> get rid of this. Get rid of this. Glue out of the way. Uh, let's see here what I can do. All right, camera's not in a bad spot, I guess. Actually, I'm going to uh, to turn this thing around a little bit. Uh, let me readjust the camera. Sorry, folks. Out the hair so I can get a better picture here. There we go, that's crisper. Okay, so where did I put the. Here it is. Well, Mr. Jimbo, thank you, sir. Okay, so here is my control booth. Uh, let's say, and last month I told you that I had. Uh, was fighting with the windows and didn't get them finished in time. Excuse me one second. Ah, Rex Mug sure comes in handy. Ah, Timothy Kiner, good to see you, man. Uh, and I was going to redo the windows and have them installed for tonight. Uh, I did get the windows finished, and I was happy with... <laughs> good, Norman, you recognize it now. Cool. <laughs> um, I did. I did get the windows finished. They came out. They came out fine. I was happy with them uh, until I tried to install them, and I don't know. They just. They didn't seem to fit for this building. Uh, so I, I took them out, and I will. Uh, I have another idea which I should have ready for uh, for next month. But so I'm just going to install the. The building without the windows at this point and uh, next month I should have the have the windows ready and uh, to answer Heath's earlier question uh, yes I think a couple of these windows will open well they will probably be modeled open absolutely Lynn uh, I have never been one to let uh, inanimate objects beat me. And sometimes it involves uh, some bad words. In fact, usually it involves some bad words. But uh, no, I definitely, uh, I definitely do not let them win. So for putting down the uh, the control booth, just using a few dabs of super glue. Some uh, medium super glue, some gap filling. Uh, there's that. Now, where did my. Now, yeah, let's see what time are. I? Oh, okay. Uh, now, let's see. We'll put on my little propane tank. Oh, not there, not there. That's where the ladder's got to go, dummy. <laughs> so we're going to 
put him. Hmm. Maybe we're going to put him up. Hmm. Didn't think that through too well, did I? All right. I guess we're going to put him here. All right. So, that's pretty much what I have for tonight. Let me, uh... <clears throat> Let me see if I can't rearrange this a little bit. Give you folks a better uh, uh, exactly, Norman. Uh, the windows that I made look too too modern. They were they looked like uh, like steel frame windows, and they just didn't fit. I mean, the windows came out nice and they looked good, but. Not what I wanted for this building. <clears throat> so I thought it would be better to just hold off and make new ones. So let's see if I can't get a better view here. All right, there we go. Oh, back up. All right, I guess that's... That's probably as, about as good as we're going to get here. Uh, maybe that's a little bit better. Um, still not looking all that the same. Of course, it never does. But it looks, I think it looks better in person than what I'm seeing on the camera now. Um, Nice, Corey. Yeah, there's uh, there's a couple here. There's one there. I did break one off, so that uh, uh, that needs to get glued back in. And uh, on this side, next to the boat, uh, turn this around. I mean, is a buoy that uh, says no wake. Uh, there, over next to the uh, channel markers, there is a fish, and uh, we'll get a fisherman in there with uh, with a fishing line. Uh, but that, he'll be dead last because I'll end up ripping him off. And I even have a couple of snakes right there. They'll uh, they'll show up a little bit better when I get some more uh, some grass in there. All right, let me uh, let me put you folks back on hold for a second while I get this out of my way, and I will be right back. Thank you, Lane. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I was going for, uh, Corey. Uh, I am going to off the rails. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you stopping in. back folks uh norman hates snakes well you know what norman snakes are not my favorite thing either uh but as long as they're you know about uh three eighths of an inch to a half inch long and they're on my layout then they're fine uh, let's see uh so when i uh when we come back next month i'm going to uh I should be finishing up the the control booth. I'll have the, the windows ready and can install them. Uh, I'll probably be working on weathering those panels, assuming 
that I end up liking them and I'm going to keep them. <laughs> yeah, he must he must be because uh, the guy in the boat certainly wasn't uh, wasn't reading that sign. Uh, so I will uh, probably be weathering the uh, the diamond plate. Uh, CB going home. All right. Good night, CB. Appreciate you being here, man. Uh, and um, I'm sure I have a lot more details. I have more details for the uh, for the control booth. Uh, I need uh, I need staircase going up so that the <clears throat> poor guys that work in there can can get in and out. And uh, I'll see what else I can add to it. Um, I don't think next month will be the last, uh, but we will be, but we're getting close. <laughs> this has only been, what, uh, 13 or 14 uh, uh, sections? Yes, next month's show will be almost be Thanksgiving. Well, about three weeks before Thanksgiving, but <laughs> yeah, we're definitely getting close, man. This year is certainly flying. Uh Oh, hey, you got to take care of the dog, man. I understand that. All right, folks, so that's about all I had for tonight. Uh, I, I do want to get a decent picture of it, uh, of the that, uh, that grading up, because I kind of like to get, uh, get some opinions on it. I'm going to live with it for a while and make sure I'm happy with it. I did uh, ask Brian at the Iron Horse route what he thought. And he liked it, so we'll see. We'll see what uh, what I end, what what I end up doing. Uh, Rusty, yes, you're right. It won't be long until it's Halloween. <coughs> Thank you, Kyle. Certainly appreciate everybody being here. And let's see. Oh, about nine o'clock. Okay, that hour went pretty quick. At least for me, might not have gone so quick for you. Uh, <laughs> I hope so, Edward. I'd love to have it done and be able to uh, to get the uh, the final review out. Uh, thank you, Robert. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, Dwight. Off the rails. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, Norman. Ken. Thank you, Steve. John B. And Mike Rail Artist, thank you, man. It's certainly appreciated to have all you folks uh, hanging out with me tonight. And uh, <laughs> don't ask Brian anything he went to school in Mississippi, too. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, one good thing, though, I have learned to, by just by talking to Brian, I've learned to, to speak Mississippi. Uh, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I, I really appreciate everybody being here. All right. With with all that being said, I think I'm going to uh, to call this a night. Thank you, Edward and Corey. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, don't forget, uh, let's see, Tuesday night should be, well, let's start with Monday. Monday is uh, off the tracks Monday, and... If I'm not mistaken, it should be on James uh, Dundas Model Dundas Junction Model Railroad's channel, I believe. If I'm wrong, then it'll be on Trackside Mike's channel, uh, and of course Tom at eight o'clock on Monday, and Wilmer should be uh, on track Tuesday. Uh, Jason, thank you, man. I appreciate it, and. Uh, from there on, I guess uh, I guess you're on your own. But I'm sure I will see you folks in the in the stream somewhere. And I hope everybody has a great week. Thanks for hanging out tonight, guys. Take care. <laughs>